What's up guys, BC Amplified. This is Money in the Bank 2017. The good, the bad, and the ugly for June 18th, Money in the Bank for 2017. Uh, this event had the good, it had the bad, and it certainly had the ugly. The ugly uh, is a little too annoying slash frustrating for me to talk about so I did make a phone call and I got a little special guest that's going to take care of the ugly in just a few minutes uh, and we're definitely going to get to the good a little later on I want to start off guys with the bad it's only one match um, so the bad category is going to be filled with just one match and that's going to be the Usos defending their tag team SmackDown championships against the New Day. This match goes in the bad category because not only was a lot more expected from these two teams but the way that this match ended in just a nonchalant countout, not even a countout because of something devastating that happened to the Usos. No, the Usos just kind of ran away. Um, this is the most, this is the cheapest form of a countout. And at a pay-per-view, this should never happen. That's something that shouldn't even happen really on TV. That's annoying enough. But when it happens at a pay-per-view, especially between two teams that we've seen wrestle so many times in the past, guys. It's one thing if it's like a few that we're just seeing and they want to keep building upon it. No, we've seen the New Day take on the Uso so many times in the past uh, that this was a time where it really had to come to fruition, um, that, that you had to have a more, uh, a more efficient way <laughs> of determining who is going to win this match at a pay-per-view. And just having the Usos run away, obviously and clearly that is prolonging this feud to another match with the Usos and New Day. Well, that's the last thing we need. We need that like we need to see Enzo and Cass versus uh, Sheamus and Cesaro again. We don't need to see that. Or Enzo and Cass versus Gallows and Anderson, right? The Raw tag team division is always having the same teams face each other. Well, this looks like we're just going to see the Usos in the New Day again. But because it's on SmackDown, WWE wants us to think that it's a whole new feud. So they run away with their tag team championships. New Day wins the match. Uh, Usos keep the titles. This was lackluster in every way. The match itself and the ending was absolutely just, uh, it was atrocious. Uh, it could have been booked and created so much better than that. It, it seemed like no input at all was put into this match. And that does not surprise me in the least. Um, and that's the bad. I'm not even going to fucking harp on this. This is the easiest part of this whole video. The bad. Usos and New Day. Everything about it. On to the ugly. Again, as I said, guys, this is more annoying and frustrating for me. I, I don't even want to fucking deal with this match. That, that was the ladies' first ever history-making ladies' money in the bank match. And uh, it was just a fucking, a, a tr the whole thing was worse than bad. It was pretty ugly. And again, I had to make a phone call and have somebody else do this for me. So um, take it away, special guest. And just like that, I'm back, right? After being kicked to the curb because I wasn't a draw on this channel anymore. Because I wasn't making this channel any money because of YouTube's new policies I get kicked to the curb by the OG, but when shit hits the fan and shit gets to its very lowest in this business, who do they call? 2.0. Of course I'm going to accept the invitation because I got a lot to talk about, right? They give me the entire ugly section of this video, I'm going to fucking use it in its entirety for that ladies ladder match. From the booking, to the performance, to the creativity. Lack of all three. All three areas that you need to put on a really good match. Booking, performance, and creativity. All three were absolute trash last night. Let's start with the booking. 13 minutes and 20 seconds is what they gave those ladies from opening bell to end bell. 13 minutes and 20 seconds. Think about that. The men got a half an hour, 29 minutes, 45 seconds. A half an hour, that means the ladies did not even get half. Of what the men got. How the fuck do you not give them at least half? A ladder match should at least have 25 minutes anyway. And it should be a lot more. But even if you gave both ladder matches a half an hour. The other three matches could have only had 20 minutes. Which you gave Orton and Jinder Mahal. You gave them 20 minutes. If every other match got 20 minutes. That would equal two hours of wrestling. That means you still had a whole hour for filler. 
promotional videos, marketing, entrances, and any other filler bullshit you need. Uh, fucking promote your network, all that good shit. Debut Maria Canellis and Mike fucking Canellis, because it's Mike Canellis now, it's no longer Mike Bennett, it looks like, and we'll get to that in a fucking minute too. You could do all that shit, you had a whole nother hour, and you could have still delivered two full hours of wrestling. Two hours out of three for actual wrestling at a pay-per-view. Now there's a concept, but no. Who got stiff last night? It was the fucking ladies. 13 minutes. What can you do with 13 minutes on TV? Let alone a pay-per-view. Let alone a ladder match at a pay-per-view. So right from the beginning, these ladies were fucking doomed. But let's go on to performances. Because they at least had 13 minutes to do some things that were special. Th things that would make us remember this match. And these ladies did not do that. Now, I, I ain't going to totally bash them. They went out there and they got into a mini car wreck. So, good for them. They took some good chair shots. There were some brutal shots in there that they deserve credit for. But nobody dared to fucking fly is how the OG put it in his tweet, right? There is no room for fear is what he put tonight. Dare to fly. Well, nobody dared to fly. I think he even put take chances. Nobody took chances last night. The only thing, the only person that really flew was Charlotte and she just went on the top turnbuckle and did some weird little fucking flip onto two other ladies. If that's the case, her moonsault that we've seen a million times from the turnbuckle to the outside is way more fucking cool looking and devastating. I mean, that was different, I guess you could say, but there was nothing fucking outrageous about it. Charlotte can do that in her sleep. So I'm not going to fucking remember that. No, we thought Becky Lynch was finally going to show people that she's not just a ground technician. She's not boring in the ring. She has a, she can actually fucking fly. She has an aerial attack. That was her moment to do that from the ladder. Something like a big leg drop like the OG said. Something cool. No, Becky Lynch didn't even fucking attempt anything from the top of that ladder. What about Tamina? The whole build for Tamina up to this match on her Twitter, her Instagram, all that fucking good shit was, oh, I'm, I'm going to fucking have a tribute to my father, right? This is going to be my fucking, uh, my, my big moment and a tribute to my father. We thought she was going to do the super fly splash off the top rope, I mean, off the top fucking ladder, or at least the middle of the fucking ladder, something special, right? As a tribute to your father. No. Tamina didn't even attempt to do anything on the top of that fucking ladder. So where was the fucking special shit, man? If I'm in that fucking match, as a fucking lady, I am going to do something never before seen. I am going to dare to be different, dare to be crazy, and dare to fucking fly. I am going to create a moment for fucking ages. Nothing. Nothing in that match am I going to remember. Other than... That fucking ending. So I guess fucking Vince and Kevin Dunn got their wish. Because we're definitely talking about this match, right? But we were going to talk about it anyway. We were just hoping it was going to be for the right reasons. For the good shit. Instead, we're talking about the lackluster fucking absolute carnage that took place afterwards. The catastrophic fucking bullshit that took place afterwards. Which was Ellsworth ascending to the ladder. Up the ladder. Getting that briefcase. And winning money in the bank. That's right. It wasn't fucking Carmella that won the match. Let's be fucking obvious here. It was James Ellsworth. And everybody was cheering Ellsworth, right? Everyone's fucking cheering. Yes, Ellsworth's going to capture the briefcase. And I'm here thinking, what the fuck are you cheering about? It's going to end the match. You know damn well he's going to give that to Carmella. Did you people cheering honestly think Ellsworth was going to compete in the women's division from here on out? Get the fuck out of here. He was giving that to Carmella. So I'm like, why are these idiots cheering? The same idiots that five minutes into the match were chanting, this is awesome, by the way, which you are the fans that, that ruined that chant. That's why when it was actually chanted in the main event men's ladder match, it didn't mean anything anymore because you already ruined that chant. This is awesome. Five minutes into that ladies match. First of all, even if that ladies match was going to be great, it wasn't five minutes in. And by the way, the match ended up not being anywhere near great or awesome. But still, five minutes into that ladies' match, you chanted, this is awesome. And you were the same fans cheering for James Ellsworth to get that briefcase. And then two minutes later, when you realized what the fuck you just did, then you started booing him. Oh, now I don't like it. You know, you were the fan, that the casual fans, and the fans that think they're too, they're too cool for school. 
and you try to come down on the smart fans. Oh, the smart fans are killing the business. The smart fans take it too seriously. Do we? Or do we just want logic in what we're watching? Do we, do we like to fucking have things make sense? Oh, maybe I am fucking dumb then. Ever since I was a, a little 2.0, I always wanted things to make sense. I always wanted logic. But I guess smart fans are killing the business. Or could it be the fucking fans chanting, this is awesome? Or could it be the fans cheering for a fucking dude to win the first ever women's ladder match? Yeah, maybe it's the smart fans, though, that are killing the business. It's not the casuals and the, and the guys that are too cool for school that, that try to come down on the smart fans. Yeah, okay, buddy. It's the smart fans that are killing the business. It's not the this is awesome fans. Unfucking real so he's getting cheered as he ascends up the ladder and then he grabs the briefcase. And now the referees are like, what do we do? I've never seen this before. And the broadcasters are really playing it up, right? They're like, oh, well, I guess he won the match because there's no real rule on this. JBL, what do they do? This has never been seen before. What the fuck are you? You're a billion dollar company. Are, are these referees fucking smart or not? Like none of this is making sense at this point. You got a bunch of referees coming together like a bunch of bonehead stunads, not knowing what to do. Then James Ellsworth goes, gets on the microphone and says, your winner, Carmella. And then the referees are like, oh, all right. Well, James Ellsworth said Carmella. I guess it's over. And that was it. James Ellsworth not only captured the briefcase, but then he announced who the winner was. And the referees are just like, okay, sounds good. Let's go to catering, guys. This match is over. What the fuck are you? None of this made fucking sense. And oh, it's just the smart fans taking it too seriously again. We're the ones who should just sit back and enjoy the entertainment, right? Not when it doesn't make sense, you fucking idiots. It's a ladder match. Even if it's a written rule or it's, it's an unwritten rule, we know what the rule is. You have to climb the ladder and retrieve the briefcase. Not only <laughs> did a guy in the women's ladder match retrieve it, but it was somebody who was not even in the match. If that's the case, any fan, if 2.0 was in St. Louis last night, I could have jumped the barricade, got in the ring, grabbed the briefcase. And by WWE standards, by WWE's logic, I won the match. It's not just a crazy fan who won the match. No, the referees would get together and be like, 2.0 won. I I've never seen anything like this. I guess 2.0 is the winner. And I'll just get on the mic and say, I won the fucking match, bitches. And they'd be like, he won the match. That's it. Catering, here we come. Uh, what the fuck? None of it made fucking sense to me. It, it would have been a cool moment in entertaining if that all happened. And then Shane McMahon came out and they restarted the match. But no, Shane McMahon is tweeting his frustrations. The commissioner and the fucking general manager are tweeting their frustrations. Instead of restarting the match like they should have fucking done, they should actually be there at the event... No, they're tweeting like the OG is tweeting. The difference is the OG is a YouTube creator who fucking has a following that he's fucking uh, interacting with. There is no fucking reason that the commission and the general manager should be tweeting with the OG during the fucking event that they should be fucking commissioning and managing. No, they're tweeting. I'm fucking pissed off. This is not how this, this is not how I saw this going or whatever the fuck they tweet. Get the fuck out of here. Absolute bullshit, guys. There, there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason for this bullshit. You could have honestly put a rabbit and a turtle in that match, and it would have been a better match. Uh, then again, a rabbit and a turtle probably would have gotten more time than 13 minutes, because Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon would be way more entertained watching a turtle and a fucking rabbit. But no, the ladies, they got to tarnish that, right? Guys, this isn't just about ruining the first ever ladies history-making history ladder match. You know what I mean? What do you think that's propaganda and hype? Um, this actually does mean something for a lot of these ladies and for a lot of fucking young girls that are watching this. This actually meant something. As a male fan for many years, this meant something. This was cool. This was a cool moment. And uh, it's not just even about that. It's about fucking the ladder match, which holds so much prestige. Because that's the one match you can't fuck with. Even steel cages. We've seen guys come from underneath the ring while the cage was up. We've seen guys come with bolt cutters and, and clipping the fucking thing in hells in a cell. And... But the latter match was pure. That match was the one match where it's cut and dry, plain as day. You have to climb that ladder yourself and retrieve that briefcase. And last night, they fucked with that. They fucked with the purity of that. That's not controversial. 
That's fucking sickening. That's mind-boggling. That's numbing to me because the ladder match was always cool. By the time they got to the men's ladder match, I was actually, there's a part of me that like didn't even want it to be a ladder match because I was still sickened by what I saw earlier. So it's not the fact that they just ruined this history-making uh, ladies match, first ever ladder match. They ruined the ladder match as a whole because now it became a farce. It became another match which in the future we could see some illogical, uh, erratic booking in creative decision making and that's not good going forward because now they know now kevin dunn vince mcmahon creative now they know they can fuck with the ladder match in the future too that's why this whole thing is a slippery slope that just goes downhill from there man it's a bunch of bullshit and uh ah uh, it's fucking it's pathetic I, I don't even want to keep talking about this now because i didn't even go for my coffee yet if i go into starbucks and i'm pissed off i'm gonna start fucking throwing bows at people Customers are going to be flying out the window. I'm going to be back in prison. I don't need this bullshit. Uh, real quick, what I do, don't cut me off just because I'm done with the ladies. It's been a long time. Maria Canellis and Mike Canellis, right? Because they're not calling them Mike Bennett. They're calling them the Canellises. They fucking debuted last night. Everyone was like 2.0. I can't wait for Maria and Mike Bennett to get to WWE. Why? Why? They weren't special in, in fucking... New Japan Pro Wrestling. They weren't special in Ring of Honor. They weren't special in fucking their little stint in TNA. What makes you think they're going to break out in WWE? All they look like to me is the SmackDown version of Miz and Maurice. And guess what? I've already seen the Miz and Maurice on SmackDown. So fuck Mike Bennett and fuck Maria Kanellis. I don't need that fucking bullshit on my fucking TV. And then you got fucking... Uh, I don't care if this has to do with fucking money in the bank or not. It's been a long time. Don't even think about cutting me off. Okada Omega. You know, you guys praise Omega as this fucking shining star. The second coming. He's the best wrestler in the world. Let me tell you the fucking 100% truth and facts about Kenny Omega. He Absolutely not guys. Absolutely not. We're not doing that on this video. This is not about Okada or Omega. This is not about any other subject. This is just about money in the bank. So I apologize. That's being cut short. Um, this is just money in the bank. Um, what I will comment on is uh, Maria and Mike Bennett showing up. Um, yes, I see the similarities between Miz and Maurice, but I'm at least happy that WWE did something that seemed special at a special event. There is a concept, right? Um, so at least they had somebody debut at a pay-per-view. I mean, it seems like every pay-per-view goes by and it doesn't even feel special. Nothing that's memorable even happens. So I'm at least, A, I think they deserve to to be in the WWE. And I think that uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they do with them. And to be honest with you, I would much rather see Maria and Mike Bennett versus Miz and Maurice than John Cena, Nikki Bella versus Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania because you knew Miz was not going to beat John Cena at WrestleMania, uh, not, especially not when he has Nikki Bella with him and, and Miz just has Maurice. I think Mike Bennett, Mar Maria Kanellis, and Miz and Maurice, I think that's a much more level playing field and much more intriguing for me. So if they ever want to pump up Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis to Miz and Maurice status... Uh, I'm okay with seeing that feud in the in the future, man. But uh, I'm I'm interested to see where they go with Maria and, and Mike Bennett from here. I'm just happy that they actually brought them out at the pay per view and didn't wait till SmackDown. I just wish they would have went all the way to the ring, stopping right at the in the rampway made them made them seem less important. Go to the ring, really make your presence felt. But it was at least good to see them last night. So I have a, a little difference of opinion there. And then, um, real quick, also, Brizango versus The Ascension. We found out another reason why the women's ladder match only got 13 minutes and 20 seconds, because they wanted to have The Ascension have a filler match. Here's an idea, and I'm a big Brizango fan, guys. You guys know that, but there was ways to use Brizango that was way more important and way more interesting than a three-minute fucking uh, snooze match. And having The Ascension Brizango take away from... The time that the women could have had? Uh, absolutely not, man. That's That was just atrocious. Um, but I will say this. I'm going to make one comment about that ladies' match. That left so much more to be desired. I think they... I felt it was just starting to get good. And then it was just fucking stopped. I, I, that's a big reason why I couldn't even do that fucking review. Because that is just... Uh, that was so annoying. 
I'm going to end that right there. Let's go to the good, right? Because there was a lot of good here, guys. The reason we're all kind of a little bit negative this morning is because of that ladder match mostly, you know? And the tag match obviously was a complete fail, but the ladder match was an epic fail. And I think it was so wrong, everything in that match, that we have a negative vibe this morning. But there was a lot of good last night. In fact, three of the five matches, only five matches, announced matches, I'm not counting Brizango, I'm not counting the Hype Bro match, five announced matches for the pay-per-view, three of them fucking delivered. I'm starting off with Lana taking on champion Naomi. That match, everything that happened that needed to happen, that I felt should happen, happened, guys. Lana got the upper hand quick, Lana looked dominant that whole match, and Lana lost by submission. Everything worked perfectly. I'd rather have Lana lose by submission, guys, rather than pinfall. Because she's playing this, like, million-dollar princess type, um, you know, this princess-type princess, princess type character that tapping out, she can easily bounce back from. She can throw a little hissy fit, her tantrum, and she'll bounce back. When you lose via a pinfall, though, on your debut, that just looks a lot more worse, man. It, lo it makes you look weaker. Now, yes... There are many times a submission will make you look weaker. I'm not saying it doesn't. What I'm saying is in this instance, I feel that if Lana was to get pinned on her, flat on her back, one, two, three, it would not be a good look for her on her debut. Submitting to the FTG, that is fucking, that's ab admirable, right? I mean, it's fucking the champion of SmackDown, Naomi. And as far as Naomi, she got dominated, but then she won by submission with the FTG. So Naomi looks good because she won by submission, and Lana will save face because she lost via submission. I know it doesn't make complete sense, guys, but trust me, that's exactly what should have happened. Lana should not have been pinned last night, but Lana needed to lose. So it was perfect. And... and Carmella came down as if she was going to cash in her briefcase. Let me get one thing straight, guys, because there's all this negativity on the ladder match, the women's ladder match. I'm a huge Carmella fan, A. And B, I said from the beginning, that Money in the Bank briefcase needs to be on Carmella and James Ellsworth because they can do, they can have so much fun with that going forward on SmackDown. And just, you know, picturing Carmella being this, this annoying little brat for as long as she has that briefcase and having James Ellsworth carry it all around for her, I think that's what needs to happen. The way it happened is what annoyed me and when Carmella came out, if this was any other circumstance and Car Carmella got that any other way, that would have been interesting to me and it would have been fun. But because I was still so annoyed by what happened earlier, I didn't even want to see Carmella out there with that briefcase because I was just like, just no, just get off, just leave. <laughs> so... Uh, that was another point in the match, but th that was not the reason that this is in the good section. In fact, that would have just made it bad, but what should have happened between Lana and Naomi happened, and I am happy with that. So those two, awesome job last night. And Lana surprised me. I think she can only get better from here, guys. So everyone that thought Lana was going to throw up a dud, you were wrong. Lana actually impressed last night. But Naomi continuing this thing. I would have loved to see Charlotte come out and attack Naomi turn full-fledged heel and set up Naomi Charlotte for SummerSlam last night, but they didn't go that route. That would have been a cool uh, icing on the cake. Moving on, the WWE World Championship match, right? Jinder Mahal defending his championship against Randy Orton. Fucking love this match, and I knew I would. Just like Backlash, I enjoyed this match as well. Uh, I think Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton work so good together. And there was, you know, there was those people on Twitter saying, oh, this match was boring and this and that. And sucks for you guys, man. That, that does suck. That, that means that Money in the Bank was even less interesting to you because I fucking fully enjoyed that match. To you guys that thought it was boring, to you guys that don't like that old school uh, wrestling style with two main event guys, two heavyweights taking on each other. Um, in a classic wrestling match. Um, not saying the match was classic. I'm saying classic as in this is what we used to see back at like WrestleMania 7, Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter. They weren't the best wrestlers, Hogan and Slaughter, but they put on an awesome WrestleMania 7 main event because it was an old school storytelling, right? You had the anti-American versus the American. Well, in this, uh, in this format last night, you had the anti-American versus 
the hometown hero, St. Louis's Randy Orton, you know what I mean? And so you had Mahal and Orton, the hometown guy versus the guy who thinks that America is against him, so now he's against America. The story tells itself. So right off the beginning, you're intrigued, and then Mahal has just been improving as a wrestler. So he's been getting better and better. So awesome job that he's been doing. You think it's boring. I don't know what you think is fucking boring. The ending was even more legit, man. The, the, the Sim brothers get booted, but on their way out, they get into an altercation with the legends. And then all of a sudden, Orton sees this. Orton comes out, takes out the Sim brothers through fucking tables. One of the Sim brothers stands up on the table. Orton's on another broadcast table, runs, flying RKO from one table onto the next against one of the Sim brothers. I mean, that spot was fucking awesome, man. What an RKO. Orton gets back in the ring, Mahal's waiting for him, hits him with the finisher, Mahal wins. Mahal had to win that match and keep his title, guys. You're going in the SummerSlam. Mahal is, is one of, if not the top heel on SmackDown now. He's got to lose that belt at the big pay-per-view, SummerSlam, not at fucking Money in the Bank. So what happened should have happened, and it was a fun ending. So anyone who thought it was boring, I got one word for you, dive. If you don't know what I mean, Google that shit. Google Randy Orton and dive, all right? Um, because those are the fans that were bored of that uh, of that world championship match last night. Because Mahal Orton delivered again. I loved it. If you guys didn't, sucks for you. I enjoyed it. Moving on with the good. You had uh, this ladder match. This, uh, this, the, the guy's ladder match, right? Now this just delivered in every way possible. I, there were times in this match, guys, I was like, don't fucking stop. Literally, like we used to say for Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, fight forever. Because I didn't want it to end, man. This match was so fucking good. Everybody was on their stride. I knew when Nakamura got taken out by Baron Corbin early that Nakamura was going to come back. And that's when it dawned on me, Vince could even let Nakamura win this thing. But once the broadcaster started saying, this is it, Nakamura can can conquer his dream or whatever they said... Once they start saying that and selling you that they're going to win, then you know they're definitely not. So we knew Nakamura wasn't going to win once the broadcaster started really hyping him. But one of the coolest spots in this match is when Nakamura set the ladder up. Everyone else was out. Nakamura stared up and he was about to climb. And all of a sudden, AJ Styles enters the frame on the other side of the ladder. And it's Nakamura face, facing AJ Styles on each end of the ladder. And the crowd at this point is, 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 is fucking finally realizing what this means. You know, they're teasing what could be the start of Nakamura and AJ Styles. Because one day we're going to get it, probably WrestleMania 34. But what was really cool is they both picked up the ladder and put it aside. And they met back in the middle of the ring. And we saw the beginning of Nakamura and AJ Styles. Just a little taste of what they can do. And trust me, that was nothing. That was just um, them throwing some bows, some fucking kicks. But it was so cool to see the beginning of that. Another awesome spot that only a guy like AJ Styles can really sell is when Styles was about to, to grab the briefcase. And maybe it was Baron Corbin. Somebody took the ladder away from him. And AJ Styles is hanging up on the cord, up on the briefcase. And he sold it so good. Like, what do I do? Do, 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 I, do I try to hang on as long as possible? Do I just fall? It, it was like a you really got the sense like it was a guy who was like in panic mode. Like he is so high up and if he falls, he's fucked. So he's trying to fight for his fucking life. You know what I mean? You really got that sense the way he was like struggling. And you know, that's just an epic performer that AJ Styles is. So it was almost like, uh, remember that Home Alone scene when fucking uh, Kevin lights the fucking rope full of kerosene and, and they're fucking trying to like go back up the ladder but they, they, it's, too, it's too hard to climb the ladder, so they eventually, Marvin Harry, right, Joe Pesci, uh, they, they got to fucking just fall. So they're trying to climb back up, but they can't. It's too hard, so they just have to fall. Um, it, it, it reminded me of that scene. AJ Styles is trying to climb the cable, and we're thinking, like, where does he think he's going to go? But that's what I mean by you got the sense that he was in panic mode. And when a human being when a human being is in panic mode, they're doing some erratic shit. So he's trying to climb because he doesn't want to fall. And finally it becomes too tough and you see him struggling and he just falls. And he doesn't just fall, guys. Any competitor in WWE, 90% wouldn't know how to really fall from that. And they were just like, like, like you dive into a pool, you do what's called a pencil. 
In other words, when you don't dive in a pool, you just kind of like fucking jump up and you go feet first into the pool. It's called a pencil. People would just dive like feet, you know, just fall feet first. AJ Styles, guys, he falls wailing his arms, kicking his legs like like he made what was maybe, I don't know, anywhere from fucking 10 to 20 feet up and up in the, in the air. Um, almost 15 feet at least, right? Top of a steel cage at least. He made that look like it was 30, 40 feet up the way he fell because he's wailing his arms. It looked like a brutal fall. And only AJ Styles can sell that shit, man. That was fucking epic. So that was another awesome fucking spot. Uh, Kevin Owens, man. Is he even... Has anyone seen or heard from Kevin Owens since? Because is he even walking after the, the, the hit he fucking took, man? AJ Styles sent him for a ride through a ladder on the outside. Uh, I don't even know if the ladder actually broke. I know Kevin Owens like bounced off it and he wasn't seen from again. That was fucking cool. Um, what am I missing? I know I'm going to, I'm missing a bunch of fucking spots here. It, it was just an awesome fucking match. Sami Zayn. Can I just give a shout out to Sami Zayn? He was the star last night. Sami Zayn was so fucking good. That is the Sami Zayn we loved in NXT. That's the Sami Zayn we need to see more of. And if Vince McMahon is telling Sami Zayn to lighten up your style and fucking loosen up on it, I would say, fuck you, Vince, or maybe that'll cost him his job. So I would go to the ring. I would tell Vince, okay, Vince, and I'll go to the ring, and I'll be Sammy fucking Zayn. Fuck what Vince is telling you. That's the Zayn we need to see, not this quirky little nerdy guy that Vince is trying to make him. Fucking A, man. That's the Sami Zayn. He goes in that ring, and he delivers the best performance, man. He's right up there with AJ Styles and fucking... I mean, look at the talent in that match, man. Styles, Nakamura, Owen, Zayn, fucking A, Dolph Ziggler. The least talented guy was Baron Corbin, and he won the whole fucking thing. Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm okay with Corbin winning this because that makes sense. Corbin carrying around that briefcase isn't the greatest thing for his character because he's a badass, and here he is carrying around a briefcase, but it does also make sense. They want to make him a top heel, and now he's got this, this fucking uh, this Money in the Bank briefcase, man. That makes him more relevant. So, as I put on Twitter last night, it makes sense that Baron Corbin won, but, and this is a huge but, he's not over yet. So this is a real risky thing. They made, they let him win Andre the Giant Battle Royal two years ago at WrestleMania, and that didn't pay off. He's still not over yet. So now they doubled down, guys. They had him now win the Money in the Bank briefcase. I'm hoping he can get over, man, and this isn't all for nothing, because as of right now, Baron Corbin is still not over. And that's what made that moment last night when he, when he got that briefcase. It made it anticlimactic. You guys know that. It was a right decision, but it was anticlimactic because he's not over yet. So the fans really have to learn more about Baron Corbin. And that means, you know what that means, guys? Creative has to get creative with him on Tuesday Night Smackdown. Booking needs to know how to book Baron Corbin if you want him to get over. But I'm okay with the, the way that match ended because I'm okay with that whole match. That match was fucking awesome. Um, and again, when the, when the crowd started chanting, this is awesome, this time it was, but we couldn't really count on that because like 2.0 said, they wore that out with the ladies, man. What did 2.0 say? I think he said it was like five minutes into the match they were chanting that. Dude, you can't be doing that because then when you really do it for real... Um, you know, it doesn't mean as much, but, but the guys definitely deserve that chance because that was fucking legit, guys. Um, and that was Money in the Bank, man. A lot of good, again, overshadowed by the epic failure of the ladies' uh, match. That, that's the only way we can describe this, right? It was an epic failure. Um, it was anything but history in the making. And that's sad that that's what everyone's going to go back to when they see the first ever ladies match. But you know what? That's Vince McMahon for you. He probably sabotaged it on purpose. We go to Monday Night Raw tonight, guys. Should be fun. Roman Reigns' big announcement. Is he going to announce he's fighting John Cena at WrestleMania? I mean, I'm sorry, SummerSlam? WrestleMania. I'm a little uh, early for that. Is he going to announce that he is uh, taking on John Cena at SummerSlam? Is he going to announce that he's going to take on Brock Lesnar? Is Braun Strowman going to show up? and cancel Roman Reigns' plans, and it's going to be Roman Reigns' Braun Strowman at SummerSlam. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but we'll go on to, to uh, Raw tonight, and tomorrow I'll be back with you guys, and we'll talk all about Monday Night Raw. And damn it, if, it, if it's totally fucking horrible, I will not hesitate.
to make a phone call to 2.0 and have him review that shit. So Raw better bring it tonight. It'll be interesting to see what SmackDown uh, brings to the table as well with the modern day Maharaja and uh, what they're gonna do with these uh, with these ladies, man. I don't even know where they go from there. But uh, BC Amplified, this has been the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's kick Monday's ass. Get ready for Monday Night Raw tonight, and I'll talk with you guys tomorrow. Check you later.